Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me as we take a look at the energies of the South Node in your natal astrology chart in this show. And just like I did the episode on your North Node, where I went through each of the different astrological signs, we will be doing that in this episode as well. And I do recommend listening to both of these podcasts because they're going to help you put together some pieces that are vital to understanding what you're learning healing, and developing in this lifetime. I also strongly recommend the book Astrology for the Soul by Jan Spiller. She shares more about the specifics of your north node and what you're leaving behind. And what you're leaving behind is your south node energies. So it's a good way to get into these energies even more at a personal level. She also describes what it means when the nodes are in certain houses. So if your north node is in the second house and your south node is in the eighth house, you can read about those energies as well. And again, they help you put together the pieces of your natal astrology chart to really get into what this lifetime is about for you. And also by Jan Miller is a book called Cosmic Love. And this is about relationships and the North Node and South Node in relationships. So it's a really excellent read and it might be good to learn more about what your partner is learning in this lifetime and what you are helping them with. Conversely, it can help you see more about yourself and what you're learning in relationships. So two books by Jan Spiller, Astrology for the Soul and Cosmic Love. And I hope that they help you with this topic even more. The south node is resembling and connecting to the energies of healing for you and what you are completing, what you are leaving behind in this lifetime so that you can move towards your north node energies. And that is the area of growth, strength, and ongoing life development that you step into. Now, the south node can be a bit like how you enter the party. You know, your south node is in Gemini. Your south node is in Scorpio. And that's how you enter the party, so to speak. You enter this lifetime with these south node energies that feel very familiar, very normal, very natural. They're probably a part of your experience and they represent themes in your life that have shown up in a way that maybe were very simple for you or just very natural. We often take our south node for granted because it feels so familiar and comfortable. But the south node is basically where you're entering this lifetime, but it's not where you're leaving it, ideally. It's how you are beginning in an energy field of growth and new potentials. Now, that being said, The south node is related to karmic patterns, unfinished themes, areas of life that you're here to elevate, you're here to consciously work with, and you're here to be more aware of how to embrace and embody the fuller and more healed aspects of that astrological sign. So what you're doing with the south node is becoming aware of it, being conscious of it, and then developing it. You want it to express itself in a very intentional manner. Whereas again, it can be a very unconscious part of our life because we're so used to it. It's just so natural. It's just so normal. You take it for granted. But as you raise your own consciousness and you learn what this astrological sign is teaching you, you see new choices and new possibilities that will support you. Now, before I go into each of the 12 astrological signs and what they mean when they are in the south node, I want to address a few other things that often come up. Now, in your south node, you might have a planet that is conjunct your south node. Your Venus is conjunct your south node. Your Saturn, Pluto, Moon, any astrological planet could be conjunct this south node. And it represents and shows energies that you have traveled with in other lifetimes. It shows you more about how you're here to work with that south node. So let's say Venus is conjunct your south node. You would then look at the energy of Venus overall, relationships, money, love, how you receive your feminine energies, and how that would be strongly connected to the south node energies, and that that Venus is going to bring in people who probably feel very familiar and karmic 
to that Venus energy. The south node is a point of karma and it shows what you can heal, what you can elevate, what you can turn around consciously, what you can work with. It can also show you what you are releasing in this lifetime. So Venus conjunct the south node would be releasing relationship patterns that really don't take you where you want to go, which would be your north node energy. It could be that you then have a lot of relationships that show up that teach you about this Venus connect conjunct the south node. So that planet is a messenger. And that planet has big information for you about what you are letting go of and completing in this lifetime. Now, that would mean the cycle of energies that are unconscious with this Venus would be released and have the potential to be elevated. That does not mean you won't have a good relationship or a healthy relationship. It just means that Venus is giving you information about your soul's growth in this lifetime and that you're completing some relationship energies, some financial energies, some expressions of your feminine energies that you're meant to be aware of and look at how you can express them in the higher octaves of that astrological sign. And to be truthful, It could then be harder at times to grow away from that south node if you have a planet conjunct it because that planet's going to keep getting your attention in that astrological sign. But again, the way you work with it is that every astrological sign has a spectrum. And so you want to be aware of the energies that you are expressing in that astrological sign. Are you expressing the lower vibrational energies or the higher vibrational energies of that astrological sign? And there's so many combinations. There's so many expressions and potentials that I'm just being very brief in explaining this, but that's why it's always beneficial to go into the specialized books that tell you more about the South Node and also to understand more of what that particular planet is showing you. It's also revealing where the energies are incomplete and you could have an opportunity in this lifetime to essentially graduate. So that Venus conjunct the South Node could graduate and grow through relationships as she becomes more conscious of herself, of her self-love, her self-value, her self-worth. So there's always potential for growth, but with that south node, there's something we have to let go of. We have to let go of a lower energy, a lower level of consciousness, or anything that has held us back that we don't want to carry forward. Anything that's self-defeating as well, or a limitation. Now, as I go through each of these 12 astrological signs, I'm going to focus on the lower expressions that you're meant to leave behind, the parts of yourself that maybe you weren't aware of, that were unconscious, where you were operating just because it felt natural, it felt normal, but it really isn't supportive of what you're developing and growing in this lifetime. So the South Node is a gift in many ways because it reveals to us what we maybe didn't see, maybe what we weren't aware of, the patterns that we haven't been able to acknowledge in ourselves. So we'll begin with the South Node in Aries. And this is a lifetime of leaving behind the desire to do it all on your own, to be very aware of what you're fighting for, of where the unhealthy warrior shows up, of where you're acting out of anger or impulsiveness, of where you're perhaps feeling threatened or that something's very personal. This is the tendency to be short-minded or to only focus on yourself. And this is a lifetime where you want to elevate that and you want to switch it up so that you're aware of the bigger picture. You step out of that warlike tendency. You step out of the anger, but you're aware of the anger as a messenger. Uh, You open up to partnerships. You open up to working with people. You open up to more of what you can do with others. But you may have that natural instinctive impulse to do it all yourself or that you need to take something on, be very independent. Um, All these things, of course, can be healthy expressions, but you want to be aware of where that Aries energy is holding you back in relationships, where it's holding you back from your ability to connect with others. You don't have to be overly 
independent or overly active. So that's part of the south node in Aries is looking at what you're releasing in those lower domains of Aries energy. The south node in Taurus is here to evaluate the role of money, security, and self-reliance. You're looking at how these energies serve you. They have a purpose. They fulfill a need, but that you don't want to get overly focused on accumulation. You don't want to get stuck in a certain place. You don't want to resist the flows of life. And you're opening up to the fact that you can trust other people. You can work with them. You can have the same values as them. And you don't have to do it all on your own. There is the tendency with this south node in Taurus to be overly focused on what you own, on what you have accumulated, on where you need security. But it also reveals where you're not trusting yourself in a bigger way and you're not trusting where you can be supported. So that south node in Taurus is knowing that it doesn't have to do everything on its own. There are people you can work with and there are other resources and opportunities available to you when you let go of the reins, you're not overly controlling and you open up to trusting a bit more. The south node in Gemini is leaving behind an overactive mind feeling indecisive, feeling like you have to think it through before you take action. You're looking at how much emphasis you put on your thoughts and how that has prevented you from living or having experiences, how you're ready to take a risk and step out of the mind and do something. There's also the need to look at the power of your words and where you have perhaps unconscious thoughts or lower level messages that you could elevate. What is more inspiring or supportive of you? Where have you perhaps been too stuck in a mental wheel? And you want to step into the process of life trusting life, trusting where you can go, what you can learn, to stay open-minded and to know that not everything is perhaps linear or a fact or data or something small. The Gemini energy can focus on the particulars and this is opening you up to a bigger worldview, to greater understandings of learning and all the things you can learn about. So there is an opening energy here that the Gemini South Node is being invited to learn in this lifetime. The South Node in Cancer is learning how to not be bogged down by emotions and feelings, learning how to feel stronger in oneself and to move with the tides, to allow the energies to shift you and change you in a way that is natural without a intense reaction or anything that comes out or across to others. This is the south node that wants security and family, feels good at home, feels good with items of comfort, and all of that is probably a requirement in your life, but you're also learning that you can do things on your own and that you can step out of your home, step away from the family. You don't have to be the caretaker. You don't have to do everything for everyone, whether that is providing for everyone or uh, at the expense of yourself, really. So there's a strengthening energy here with that south node in Cancer to look at how you can feel good in yourself, feel strong in yourself, have things that you want to achieve, that you want to, that you desire, that you're worthy of, that aren't dependent upon your immediate environment or the people around you. The south node in Leo is learning how to interact with more individuals and to use the strength of taking a risk and bringing that out into the world, taking the risk to be seen, taking the risk to connect, stepping into new friendships and new ways of working with ideas. It's like taking those things that really inspire you and putting them to use. The South Node in Leo can be very stubborn and want to do something its own way. It wants to be in charge. It is a leader. It wants to 
Do what will bring it recognition. And what you're learning is to release these parts of your ego, to release that need for approval because it's going to hold you back in this lifetime. You're meant to go your own path, go your own route. You're meant to do things in a new and unique way. And you're meant to be aware of other people, of how you interact with others, of the world at large, um, and how to, again, follow your heart, but to do it in a way that allows you to connect with new friends. Like this could be a lifetime of really connecting with new people, new friendships, new groups, new, new individuals that actually have more to share with you or to teach you. So the, North, the South Node in Leo is showing you more about the strength that you came in with but to give yourself greater freedom and to move about in the world in a way that supports traveling with your power. The South Node in Virgo is here to leave behind the hyper focus on details, on being perhaps aware of faults or what's not working, uh, the importance of doing something your own way, of being overly focused on your body or yourself, being overly critical or feeling a lot of guilt. The energy of Virgo that you're meant to let go of is actually opening you up to trusting the universe, trusting spirit, trusting what you can't see, what you can't touch, and to know that you're supported as you grow away from the physical world, because that Virgo energy can be very focused on the minutia and how something needs to improve. So you're looking at how perhaps you've turned messages on yourself that have maybe been too critical or harsh um, to ensure that you can see everything as perfect as is. And that you don't have to improve everything. You don't have to fix everything. You don't have to do everything for everyone. Instead, what you're doing is detaching. And that south node in Virgo is learning to detach from being the super fixer or the improver. And you're learning to trust. You're learning to release. And you're balancing the fact that you don't have to control everything for it to work properly. The south node in Libra is revealing to you where you don't have to overly compromise in relationships or for other people. The Libra energy really wants peace and equality, wants everyone to get along. But this is a lifetime of stepping into your self-assertion, how you're here to be an individual, how you don't have to take care of other people's things, like their thoughts or their needs. You don't have to be overly concerned with what other people think. That south node in Libra can go into comparison and evaluate oneself based on others. But you're learning how to stand strong in yourself. You're learning how to be your own individual energy without it mattering who you are to others. You're looking at how you can be independent, how you can be very aware of yourself and develop the strength to be that individual and step away from relationships and partnerships or any type of sharing that actually limits you. And so your relationships are going to show you what is really you and what is not you and going to reflect back or even mirror back to you where something is unhealthy because it feels uncomfortable. So you're looking at where you need to let go of codependence and where you're here to be independent. The south node in Scorpio is here to learn from emotional intensities, the feelings that come up, the experiences that you have that are asking you to go deeper into what you feel and what you're getting in terms of a reaction, but it's asking you to balance it with something very solid and grounding, to not go into obsessive compulsive or power control tendencies, that south node in Scorpio is here to step away from other people's energies and to assert itself and ground itself in the strength of what you value. 
in the strength of what matters to you. So you're learning how to not put as much emphasis on other people, whether that is their needs, their emotions, or what you've experienced with them energetically. You're here to step away from that and to be very grounded and clear in what you need, what matters to you, what supports you. And to not overly focus on other people in general, to pull your energy away, to pull your energy out of them, and to feel like you're this very strong oak tree and that you can handle life on your own terms. And this is an, a lifetime of establishing what matters to you, of really seeing how you're here to be more self-reliant and that you can trust yourself more than ever when you balance any kinds of overreactions with something clear, grounded, and strong. The south node in Sagittarius is here to be very aware of the assumptions you make, of the knowledge you're operating from, and the belief systems that have created your life experience so far. That south node in Sagittarius is teaching you what is actually complete for you, what is no longer easy or interesting. It's showing you where perhaps you took something for granted or where you came in feeling that you had a lot of answers, a lot of information. Um, This is where the know-it-all The unconscious know-it-all can show up. It can show up as very righteous behavior as well. So you want to self-assess how you share and communicate your beliefs, your philosophies, your ideas, and you want to learn how to stay open to different opinions, different facts, different information that can come in. You want to be curious and you want to really go into logic more so than simple opinions or a simple understanding of what it means to be right and to be sure that you're really listening. Be sure that you're open to your own intuition in a healthy manner and that you are open to the fact that there's going to be a lot of conversations in the world and in your life that are going to get you thinking differently. And so the South Node in Sagittarius is to be very aware of what it has assumed or taken for granted or what it believed to be uh, the truth and to really stay open and to get into conversations with others as well as go into your own mind to really sit with something and explore it internally. The South Node in Capricorn is here to understand how you are a sovereign being, as is everyone else, and yet you're not responsible for everything. You are not the one who has to run the show or take control or take over. You're learning how to step back. You're learning how to listen to your feelings in this lifetime, to step into more of what something feels like rather than what you need to produce. This is often a hard worker, someone who comes in thinking they have to accomplish a lot, need to get a lot done, um, need to be very uh, perhaps public or very accomplished in their career, in their world, in their family. There's a sense of what you want to do and produce. But this is a lifetime to leave behind that overproduction, to leave behind that sense of being really committed to something that actually isn't for you. You're instead stepping into what is true for you internally. This is more of an internally focused development. It's looking at how you can be there for others, how you can support them, and how you can listen to your own feelings. So this is where you're balancing yourself And understanding that there's power within. It's not always about what's happening outside of you or what others see. This is an internal development lifetime and placing emphasis on that is part of your healing journey. The South Node in Aquarius is learning that it doesn't have to belong. It doesn't have to be a part of a group or a 
bigger collective. The South Node in Aquarius is stepping into that spark of individuation, what it means to create and live on your own terms, where your heart feels alive, where you feel that opening of what you want to express, where you feel confident, enthusiastic. You're developing all these qualities in this lifetime because that South Node in Aquarius can be very mental, in how it perceives its life. I have to have something figured out. I have all these ideas. I have all these things that I want to do. And you can stay in your mind without getting to the heart of something. And this is a lifetime of going into that experience of where you're really inspired. So the South Node in Aquarius is stepping away from the obligations and duties to others, stepping away from where you thought you had to show up or fit in, uh, where you thought you really had to be a part of something, and instead to see that you actually have the whole universe within you. It's already traveling within you. So what will you do and express and share with that knowingness? What will guide you? Where will you feel more alive? And also this is where you step away from the collective and you do something and develop the confidence to be seen, to be viewed, for others to know who you really are. So that south node in Aquarius is asking you to fully participate in your own life on your own terms. And then finally we have the south node in Pisces. And in this lifetime, you are moving away from being floaty or flaky or feeling like you don't know where you fit in. It's a very ungrounded energy, but you're moving towards a focal point. You're moving towards understanding what supports you on a daily basis, what habits, what things you can get done, how you can contribute, how you can be a part of the physical world, and to not be stuck in any kind of avoidance or escapism. There's also the energy potentially here of feeling like a victim, of having the energy of self-blame or self-pity. Something comes through where perhaps you feel powerless at times in your life, but this is where you're actually strengthening yourself, body, mind, and soul to be very active in your human experience, to have a passion, a focus, a purpose that drives you. There is the desire to understand what is my purpose and how can I feel a motivation to focus on it? How can I be of service? And there can be the energy of you didn't know what to do. There's been a lot of confusion, but there's something around the areas of healing and service that could inspire you and get you to commit to something that feels like it's in alignment with your energy. So for that south node in Pisces, you want to ensure you don't give up, you don't withdraw, um, you want to make sure that you're managing your emotions responsibly, and then you also want to really get clear on what you can do every day to support your body, to support your needs, and to give you a sense of purpose. So those are the energies of each south node, and for those of you who want to go further into this energy. Not only are you looking at your astrological sign, but then you want to look at the house that your south node is in. And that is the area of life where this energy is most likely to show up. And that also helps you understand how you are elevating and consciously developing energies in that part of your life. Now you could also be in contact with people who have a planet or point conjunct your south node. And especially someone who has their sun or moon conjunct your south node, that individual is going to feel very familiar to you. You are going to feel like you know them, you have a connection, there's something there. And that's because the energy is from a past life. Now, it does depend on who they are in this lifetime, where they're at in their consciousness, in their choices. Um, They could just be someone who shows up who's very supportive, who is very understanding, who sees you, you have a connection with them. They can also, however, have the energy of what you are moving away from, and therefore they can be a growth catalyst for you. So if someone has, especially their sun or their moon, conjunct your south node, they're helping you see something in yourself in a way that you can grow. And again, going back to any planet 
conjunct your south node, that planet is a messenger. That planet is showing you something that's incomplete from a previous experience that you can now consciously work with in this lifetime to elevate it to a higher expression. There is also in our lives the phenomenon of what's called a nodal reversal. So for those of you who have your south node in Gemini right now, and I'm doing this podcast in August 2020, the transiting north node is in Gemini. And what this is, it's a reverse, right? So your south node in Gemini is receiving a conjunction from the transiting north node in Gemini. And this is what's called a nodal reversal where the nodes are reversed in the chart. And it typically happens around 46 years of age. And it's a checking in point. It shows you what you have learned, released, and come to understand about that south node. And then that transiting north node comes in to support the lessons, the growth, the completion. And it can be a turning point. It can be a part of yourself that you're seeing for the first time. There can be something in your life that transpires around this energy. And it's typically significant. It's also meant to put you on course. Should you choose that? Should you uh, be aware of that? And it helps you further release what you no longer need so that by the time you have a nodal return, you are really further in alignment with your soul's growth. The nodal return typically happens every 19 years. So that would be at 19 years of age, 38 years of age, 57 years of age, 76 years of age. Those are the times when the nodes in your natal chart are in alignment with the transiting nodes and further assist you with your soul's growth. So all of this, again, is quite fascinating. It's quite fun to look at this part of your natal chart and to understand more of what you're learning and healing in this lifetime. And on that note, I did want to share with you an online program that my friend Irma K. Sawyer put together that's all about healing from your family of origin. And so for that south node in cancer or any south node in the fourth house, or if you have anything in your astrology chart that is about healing from your family of origin, uh, this course might be well-timed for you because it's helping you see the gifts of your family, uh, the blessings of your ancestors, but also helps you connect to your soul family. So I'm going to put a link below this podcast if you want to check it out. Uh, In the course, she talks about healing shame and guilt, walking away from your family of origin, new perspectives, claiming your life, the higher purpose of the family of origin, all kinds of good stuff. It's an excellent program. It is a PDF with some meditation audios. So again, it's a really good program if you need support in healing from your family and understanding what their energy has meant for you, but also what is not yours. And safe to say, this is probably something we would all benefit from and can use this information in a very empowered way. So the South Node is essentially a teacher for you. It's giving you opportunities to graduate, to evolve, to move the energies forward, to let go of those lower expressions, the parts of yourself that have been unconscious, and to see where you can elevate the energy and express it in a more healthy manner. I believe that all components of an astrology chart are here to support us, even though some are harder, some are trickier, some take a whole lifetime to master and work through. They're all components of you. They're all meant to be seen and worked with in a very loving, compassionate manner. Otherwise, we start working against ourselves and that can only set us back. So I hope this episode helped you connect some dots and see some things more clearly in yourself. And then please listen to the episode on the North Node Soul Growth as that will also help put the pieces together. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your time, energy, and presence. You can learn more about me over at mollymccord.online where you will find my current astrology programs and classes as well as business development resources and teachings to help you with your soul mission work in the world. 
I look forward to seeing you back here soon for our next podcast. And in the meantime, I wish you a beautiful day ahead.